JB here, JB here, July 26, 2022. Hope everybody's doing outstanding on this fine afternoon, about 1.23 here in the PM. Just wanted to get on audio just to talk about a couple things, talk about uh, the GDP definition being revised. Well, not the GDP, the recession definition being revised by the White House. Talk about uh, Cigna Healthcare, Humana, United Healthcare, a little bit about Roku, um, AMLX, which have some later dated strikes, probably the fur furthest out calls I've had in quite some time. I'll talk about that and uh, go from there. But really first, I'll, I'll talk about uh, CI. So Cigna, they have earnings. Let's see what the date. I think it's I think it's in August, August, uh, August 4th, right? So last week, well, the week before United Healthcare reported earnings that actually bested estimates. Amidst that, an analyst came out and downgraded uh, Cigna Healthcare, citing the slowdown in the economy. So if you're looking at what could possibly impact insurers would be people losing their jobs. So if there's if people don't have jobs, they don't have, uh, they, their employers won't pay for insurance, hence a slowdown in insurers' revenues, right? But that was not the case. We had the June employment numbers come out better than expected. So that bare thesis kind of got put to the wayside. Maybe, maybe next jobs report will, will show a decline. I don't think so. But I think that uh, I think the stock sold off four or five percent on that downgrade, but it has since come back. And uh, Humana reports tomorrow before the open, so I think that could be another catalyst for upside. Sold a lot of my Cigna calls already. I'm going to hold the rest. It's sitting here at two seventy five, right in the money. Um, I'll, I think it gets over two eighty in the, in the coming days. The unfortunate thing is only three days left till expiration. Wish I kind of went and encompassed earnings for their August fourth report, but. Maybe I'll revisit uh, tomorrow after Humana reports their earnings. But just a great story. And I think these uh, there's companies, even if there is a recession, which we're going to find out on Thursday, I think there's companies you can um, say they're somewhat recession-proof. And I think these insurers are one of those areas that uh, won't face the brunt of, of a severe decline in revenues and, and all these uh, fun things that are going on, you know, job so on and so forth. So that's Cigna. That's kind of why I added the calls on, on Friday. Lucky enough to be able to lock some of that in for profits and some freebies. So now I'm riding free into tomorrow. So I'll hold on to those. That's kind of the thought process there. Uh, Roku, unfortunately, went and got some calls uh, yesterday based on their earnings report coming out on Thursday. Um, if you don't know, of course, I, I love the Roku story. I think they're going to benefit regardless of what's going on in the economy. I think people are going to watch TV, whether they're uh, whether there's a recession or not, and, and Roku is a platform that, that people use to, to watch TV. So if someone cancels HBO Max or they cancel Netflix or they can't, you know, they cancel their Amazon Prime membership, I don't think that has a, any material impact on Roku because people are still going to be using that platform to watch their content. So unless they turn the TV off, I think Roku does well. And it's surprising to see some analysts come out this morning and downgrade the stock a few days before an, a binary event where Netflix, is, uh, Roku is going to announce their their second quarter data, their three months of, of, of data, which is not publicly available. So for an analyst not to wait for that is just mind boggling to me. But so unfortunately got the calls yesterday before the downgrade. I'm not sure if I'm going to add anything here. I, I was, I don't know if I put it, um, I think I posted in the chat room. It reminds me of Netflix back, I think it was 2012. Netflix, you had the, the big fiasco. They got rid of their, um, their, uh, you know, direct to consumer home mailing program as streaming was coming online. Consumers got upset about that. They had to, their quick, quick store, I think it was called. Then they had to reverse course and resume doing that. And the stock just got destroyed all the way back into the fifties or sixties. And then you had Carl Icahn buy a stake. Um, I forget, I forget who else, but then the stock went, that was it. That was the, the bottom and the stock just went bonkers. I'm not saying Roku's at the exact same inflection point, but I think there's similarities there. And if you take a look at what's going on with people cutting cords and the uh, addressable market of, of, of folks who are, are viewing content outside of the traditional uh, content providers, cable providers, I, th you know, I think we still there's still a huge opportunity. And so we'll have to see how that all plays out. And you have those rumors. Business Insider came out a couple, like a month ago, around possible uh, buyout intentions. Uh, Netflix is going to acquire Roku. Who knows how that plays out? But I think there's definitely an opportunity here. I'm not saying, I think it was 2012 I bought some, Netflix was trading at 80 bucks. They reported earnings, the stock went from 80 bucks to 150 in three days. 
um, I think I had like 20 of the 120 strikes by Thursday or Friday. Those were like 80. It was a lot of money. <laughs> um, I'm not saying that's the similar thing that's going to happen here with Roku, but I think there's an opportunity. And their cost structure is completely d different than Netflix. So, you know, as they their transition from hardware to a to a software platform, and then all they have to do is monetize their subscriber base, it, it's a huge opportunity. But we'll see how that plays out. Maybe it's not this quarter. Uh, maybe it's next quarter. I'm not going to sit there and try and, uh, you know, add some more risk here into the earnings report, but I think there's an opportunity for Roku, and that's kind of my thought process there. Um, AMLX. So this morning, Biogen had some news. The FDA accepted their... Um, priority review for their ALS therapy. It was, I think it was their phase three data was horrible and was denied before. Um, it's a very small sample. So it's a very rare um, affliction that, uh, that they're trying to provide a solution for. I think it's like 300 uh, people, <laughs> something like that. It's very small, but I think it's, it's kind of a, a, a signal, especially for AMLX, which is, had uh, already been denied on their first adcom, but they've been gifted a second uh, advisory council meeting where I think that's just a good sign for them. So that's why that stock's rallying. You know, look at Biogen, similar thing. I think the FDA is almost on the side of, of Biogen in, in regards to their Alzheimer's solution, their ALS drug. And I think, um, I, I, not to use the word dovish, but I think there's a more um, um, accommodative um, solutions that are coming out of the FDA where they're going to approve more drugs uh, as opposed to denying them. So I think that the news this morning out of Biogen, and it's probably the reason why it's up nearly 3%, and uh, and on the flip side, AMLX, which is up nearly 10%, I think those are the reason those stocks are rallying, and I think AMLX is going to be over 25 in the coming days, and I might look for some Biogen calls b before the day is out, because I think if, if it holds up here, and especially with the market being somewhat weak today, I think that has room for, for upside. Um, I'm trying to think of... Uh, other things, I mean, just just crazy with the fact that uh, you know, if if you uh, study the markets or you know, over the last fifteen years or so, two thousand eight, uh, you know, with the recent uh, situation with COVID, where we were we were in a recession. The definition of a recession was two back to back quarters of negative GDP growth. It was there was no question about it. It was it was the standard, right? So then this past Thursday, the White House comes out with some, um, you know. I don't want to use bad words to, um, you know, to refute anything. So I'll, I'll just say this just came out with a memo that uh, kind of retracted the definition of a recession, saying that it needs to be a holistic view. So you need to not only do you have to look at GDP, but you have to look at jobs and you have to look at uh, inflation and imports and export data and all these these other data points that were not part of the recession explanation before. And to me, if you look at GDP, GDP is the holistic view of the entire economy of the United States. So if you're looking at goods and services and everything that comes in and out, that's what GDP is. So for the government to come out and say, no, we're going to cherry pick data points so that we can say maybe we're not in a recession yet. It's just kind of comical. So, you know, I'm not, I'm not trying to be political. I'm, I'm not going to be on, I'm not either side of the, of the fence. It just kind of rubbed me the wrong way. And the more I look at it, and I'm like, wow, this pretty much confirms that Thursday's GDP data is going to be negative. It's going to be negative 1.5. Maybe the estimates, I think, is 1.8%, negative 1.8%. At least that's what the Atlanta Fed, Fed Now site says. Maybe it's over 2%. So I think they're trying to get ahead of themselves to try and avert scrutiny and the, the whole you know, firestorm that'll come out because the data comes out Thursday, the whole weekend will be all about, hey, we're in a recession. So so they're trying to get ahead of themselves and maybe argue that, hey, we're not in a recession. Unemployment's right near historical lows. And, it, you know, trying to make that argument, but it, I don't know. You're changing the rules mid-game. It's just, I just uh, kind of rubs me the wrong way. I almost prefer that we say, hey, we're in a recession and we go from there in the market, which is already seems already seems to be kind of pricing in some kind of recovery. Um, that's the preferred outcome. Similar to what's happened with gas prices, we we're going to have a gas gas tax holiday, or whatever. In, the, in New York, there is one, uh, but they were going to take back the federal gas tax, um, at least for what ninety days, and kill our infrastructure. And then, sure enough, what happens? Gas prices drop fifty cents, and then the government comes out and says, "Wow, gas prices at lows," and almost like they caused the the decline. But then, when it goes up, they 
they blame other folks. So just not a good situation. I mean, I guess in your if you're in their their shoes, that's what uh, you would do too. But oh, it just drives me nuts. So hopefully we get out of this conundrum. Markets can kind of find some footing. Summer's always a slow trading volume uh, it's a, a season. We can find some footing into September when uh, money starts coming back in. And then uh, maybe, you know, I'm not saying we're going to, I'm going to put my bullhorns on and we're going to go back to 420 on the SPY, but maybe we can chop around and find some uh, decent trading opportunities. Uh, that's it. Uh, you know, still have a few U strikes. Uh, that was great. Uh, last week, sure enough, what happens Friday, it sells off with the snap um, advertising a snafu, 25% decline in their ad revenues. And then you uh, sold off. Does it deserve to be sold off? I don't know, I guess. But down here at 33 at uh, 1030, start to bounce a little bit down, back down to 3349. Definitely a name I'll continue to watch because I think if you look at names like you and Roblox, someone just, Robo, Roblox, I don't even know how you pronounce it. Those are definitely names that I think will um, be relevant in, in the coming years. So if that's the case, then U is much higher, Roblox much higher. Um, I don't really like Meta, but Meta, if they can, you know, be at forefront of what's going on in this change from Web Web 2.0 to Web, web 3.0, certainly could be someone that benefits. And uh, I think that's it, folks. I'm trying to think of other names I've been watching. Spotify, Spotify, I think reports tomorrow before the open. Um, you know, people streaming music, definitely not going away. And uh, not only that, they, they, they've they kind of um, tried to monetize the, the podcast craze, which was uh, hit its peak, settled down, still coming back. Um, you have to think at some point Spotify is going to find its footing and rally. Probably not going to trade it in turnings, but I'll maybe tomorrow look to play that for upside. Uh, Chipotle after the close, you had McDonald's. Yeah, surprising. Um, strong comps. Um, you know, you, you look and are people trading off shopping groceries for McDonald's? I just don't see that uh, <laughs> that dynamic. So, um, not sure. You know, CMG is not really a premium casual dining restaurant, but you know, I think there's there's a loyalty behind the brand. The people who do um, look to get Chipotle, I think they're pretty loyal folks. So I don't think they're gonna stop going to Chipotle just based on cutting back in. Uh, you know, discretionary items. So maybe that does well. The only issue is the premiums are insane on CMG. So I was looking at 1,500 strikes even on a weekly basis. And they're, let's see what those 1,500s are now. The risk reward is tough. So you're, you're talking, let's say, well, actually, eh, they've come down. Well, they're down 60%. So maybe, <laughs> not going to get them for $1. ten, two hundred dollars $200 out on money with um, three days and two hours left to till expiration, probably not the best risk reward, but I could see it going higher. I, you know, I posted in the, in the watch list this morning, $1.2 billion in cash, no debt, active um, share share buyback program, which they bought a lot of shares last quarter. So, I mean, that's just, that's a great story. Um, I think that's it, folks. I'm, you know, I'll try to get back, probably not today on the audio, I'll try to get back tomorrow, um, and then possibly ahead of, uh, you know, we have the Fed, Fed tomorrow, so. Fed decision, 0.75 rate hike is it's pretty much a foregone conclusion. If it's 1%, oh, I don't know. <laughs> and if it's less than that, I don't know either. I think they got to just keep it 0.75, kind of put in question any possible rate, rate hike for their September meeting, which, you know, you would hope maybe that's folks can start, uh, you know, market starts pricing and maybe that's the last rate hike for, for 20, 2022, pending any crazy inflation spikes or what have you. And then maybe you know maybe there's some cuts at the start of 2023, and then that could be the the spark to send uh, the market higher. So that's it, folks. Let's have a great day. I'll try and get back. Rock and roll.